does the Kim Davis interpretation of not only the uh, Kentucky Freedom Restoration Act, but the constitutionality uh, of which uh, Judge Bunning ruled on, where is um, where do those two meet in the middle, or in your mind at all, are they are they two separate interpretations? An interpretation of the Constitution and her constitutional duty, and secondly, the Kentucky Freedom Restoration Act and what it says. Well, I think the Kentucky Freedom Restoration Act should go into Judge Bunning's decision as to what he should do and how he should treat Ms. Davis. Now, what you have that the United States Supreme Court has dealt with is an interpretation of the 14th Amendment and an implied right versus an enumerated right of the First Amendment, which is religious freedom and freedom of speech. So those two are at conflict now. Um, And there becomes a real question whether or not the United States Supreme Court and federal law should even be applied something under the Tenth Amendment that the United States government was not given authority to regulate or define. So there's a whole lot of legal, I guess, interpretations, machinations, uh, things of that nature that the courts had to deal with. But I would say this um, is ruled. Now, where Judge Bunning uh, comes into play is from this perspective, one, um, can he force her to do something that Kentucky law specifically gives her an, uh, a claim that she should not have to do. And that is what we're talking about here today. Secondly, I think Judge Bunning and the federal courts have even another problem in that if you look at the whole KRS 402 chapter, since the constitutional provision of Kentucky's constitution was basically declared unconstitutional. There are progeny and outgrowth statutorily of that section of our Constitution that are no longer valid. And I find it very difficult for any clerk to be able to perform their job functions if you look at the whole chapter. So there's a lot of different nuances and legal intricacies that have to be looked at by this. Do you understand that her uh, attorneys ever ask a Judge Bunning or any court to look at the uh, restoration, the Freedom Restoration Act and, and rule on it rather than uh, this being in federal court and, and uh, a judgment being made on, on the federal uh, constitution and the way it is, it is implied to the Kim Davis case? It is my understanding and understand what I'm saying, my understanding that it had not, and that was the purpose of my amicus brief, to inform the court uh, as to what I felt was the status of the law and what was going on uh, here in the state of Kentucky per United States Supreme Court ruling. And I don't think it had ever been brought to the court's attention that that is the state of the law. As I understand, Judge Bunning made reference to that in his hearing. Uh, Maybe not necessarily my amicus brief, but the fact that he was giving the plaintiffs what they wanted, but didn't know if it was now legal uh, or what the status of marriage or issuance of a license was in the state of Kentucky. In fact, uh, your position is uh, supported uh, in a piece that you might have seen over the weekend in the Washington Post from a UCLA uh, law professor who wrote uh, in this piece, the Kentucky appellate courts have had no occasion to interpret uh, Kentucky's uh, RFRA. Uh, The Kentucky RFRA by its terms would apply to religious exemption claims brought by elected officials and would provide at least the protection offered to ordinary employees by Title VII of the U.S. Civil Rights Act, uh, religious accommodation regime, and possibly more. So that, in essence, is what you're saying. Correct. And 
that is part of what I am saying. Let me say that. Plus, the reality is that there is no statutory framework to define marriage or license marriage in the state of Kentucky now. This is why you and others uh, ask uh, Governor Bashir uh, for either a special session or to at least um, uh, put into uh, some motion uh, a, a reason to delay this action on Ms. Davis and any others that it might apply to until the General Assembly can meet in 2016. Is that correct? Correct. Both the Speaker and I have had numerous conversations to talk on this. I've been the one a little more vocal about it. Uh, but a special session to clarify this because it puts at risk uh, individuals who issue licenses improperly because there is a penal section of KRS 402, it's 402990, that subjects them to, to loss of office and um, potentially one year in jail. Uh, on top of that, um, it is an issue that because of its nature and that there needs to be guidance in, and the only person who has the ability to act in that fact is the governor right now. And that's where I think he could do it by executive order, either through various sections of the Constitution uh, or under Chapter 12, which is not exactly on point, but it talks about the purpose, and I, I know this is a paraphrase, I don't have that with me, talking about efficiencies of government and smooth transition of government. He can reorganize. I think he could direct the library and archives division of his administration, direct them to issue a new form under that, basically reorganizing them um, and, and clearing this up until, or at least basically giving some guidance until we get into the session. Uh, in 16, since he doesn't feel like we could go in, or he wants to call us into session now. Well, we don't know where this is uh, going, uh, President Stivers. Uh, we do know, and I, I informed you a minute ago about uh, Ms. Davis being uh, allowed to leave jail today, but uh, she may, we, we don't know what the order uh, specifically says uh, from, from Judge Bunning. But, um, and I'm asking you here for judge, just your own uh, judgment. I know you're not uh, standing as counsel for, for Ms. Davis or for the uh, Liberty Council, but would you suggest that, um, that she might uh, seek relief in, in state court um, until the 2016 session to uh, alleviate any concern that she might be um, uh, put back uh, in, in jail or fined or... It just really sort of postpones until until the General Assembly can act? If I were her counsels, I would still be looking for relief in the Sixth Circuit um, and state courts uh, because she has civil sanctions being uh, held over her head by Judge Bunny. And I would not close down any avenue. Uh, you know, I'm a practicing attorney. I would be looking at both the state courts and I would be looking at the federal courts to educate the federal courts on the state of the law and RIFRA. And I'll be going into the state courts to get relief there also. Uh, last question. Uh, other than an executive order or a special session, do you know of any other uh, um, relief that um, Governor Bashir uh, could allow that would um, put this uh, matter uh, at least on the back burner, if you will? I know that's not a legal term in your book, but uh, until the General Assembly could act on it? Well, back burner is a good term in many, in many realms of, of professional conduct. Uh, but no, I do not. Uh, you know, legislature can't act except in the defined times, and that's um, coming up in this January or when the governor calls us into session. Uh, executive order is the only way that I know for the governor to act um, unless there is a court order that requires him to act. Uh, 
and that's why I think uh, my approach and the response to your prior question about seeking um, redress and and some relief uh, from both the federal courts and the state courts would be a, a multi a pronged approach on my part uh, if I were involved in being her counsel. President Stivers, uh, thanks very much for joining me this afternoon. We appreciate your time uh, talking to us from your law office in Manchester. Thank you, Bill. Always a pleasure.